So I don't really think y'all understand the meaning of Dr. Doom to me, just as a person and to this channel. Like he is literally the banner of this channel. He's in the middle of the banner with all the Marvel villains. He is the original icon for my profile picture on YouTube. Like he is the screensaver to my computer. He is the startup screen to the computer. My favorite character in all of fiction, in all of anything. I have the 1984 Secret Wars Volume 10 hung up on my wall. You can check my old videos from multiple years ago to see for proof. And then right across from me, I have the 2015 Secret Wars volume four like the like dr doom is in my opinion the absolute greatest character ever created in anything and the fact is he's never been given a proper adaptation in anything i would say a couple cartoons have got him right maybe uh the video games have gotten some some decent attempts at doom but it's like there's something about this character and the depth and the and just how layered he is that never allowed for live action adaptations of him and even animations to fully capture what this character is and his aura, his story, and just everything about this character. And so I had made this video months and months ago just talking about how going with Kang as your main villain is like the biggest mistake you could possibly make because Kang is a very complicated character. And while he has deep roots in, in a bunch of stories because he's so many different types of people and throughout history, he's this character and this character. And so he links up with all these different teams teams and he originates in fantastic four but he also originates in avengers it's like this character is very layered he's he's very interesting but when you are at a time right now where marvel is and you need that home run you need that grand slam because you need to convince the people that you know what you're doing you now have access to these incredible characters after the fox acquisition you need to bring the people back on your side and even though doom has not been treated well with live action adaptations there is something about this character that everybody just gravitates to whether it's his aura his classic look that he's kept for 80 years at this point there is something about this character that is just timeless and now of all times when you have these actors who are aging out and they're starting to make their way and retiring from their long careers as these characters on screen that we've seen for as superheroes for so long yesterday i had just finished watching deadpool and, and just thinking about how hugh jackman is still doing this is crazy him along with spoilers for deadpool by the way just click off three two one wesley snipes was still reprising blade and just like these guys are on a clock when it comes to how much mileage they have left you don't really have money opportunities to showcase doom as great as he could be as right now right this moment there is no better time for doom and that was the argument that people had made when kang was getting his push during loki and and ant-man is like well you can't just shoehorn doom into all this and then just rush his story while i agree Sure, you you cannot, you absolutely cannot rush this character. He's so complicated and he's so layered and he's not this creep in the back villain. He's very out front and, and very much like Iron Man, if you really think about it. He's just very sassy even. You need to showcase him now. You need to do it now because the thing with Kang is he doesn't have the pull that a Doctor Doom does. A household name like Doom who has battled countless heroes right he was featured as a primary villain in one of the old school spider-man cartoons right he's always been in the fantastic four cartoons he's headlined multiple games even a new game that's coming out marvel rivals he, he seems like he's the cover villain of the game doom has always been there but the one thing he's never had is that live action presence that live action look that we can lean on to that live action performance or actor attached to that character and what better person than to do it than Robert Downey Jr. Now, I want to talk about this for a second because a lot of people are going to sit here and be like, well, why don't we just go with somebody new? Why can't we give somebody new the chance to play Dr. Doom and make their name kind of like RDJ did? He redeemed himself with Iron Man, right? That was his redemption story. Well, if we take a look back at what they talked about starting the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what they wanted Robert Downey Jr. to do, take a look back at the tape. The original character they wanted him to do was Dr. Doom. This is like, you can't get any more full circle than this moment right here. It just means so much more than the movies themselves and putting Marvel back on track because even in the Deadpool movie, they pointed out, you know,
you know, Marvel's been slacking recently and they got to pick up the pace. They got to get better. Even with Deadpool 3, though, I want to say that, like, acknowledging that a problem exists doesn't necessarily solve it. So I hope they take this look and they take this time off because there's no movies for the rest of the year to really gather themselves and really make this iteration of Doom and whatever else is coming up. Really just get yourself together and really make it the best thing you can possibly do right now. Years ago, we heard the Russo's brothers talk about how if they ever want to return, there is a character that they want to work with. Surprisingly enough, they mentioned Craven. That's one of the characters that they really want to work on. But the other character they mentioned was Dr. Doom. He is the character that they wanted to use all these years. Like, this is the most full circle moment if you really go back and dig deep into everything that marvel is and you see how stan lee was upset with the fantastic four movie and how they butchered doom's character and he's like no that that's not what they are and kevin feige having produced those films it's so long overdue that doom finally finally gets his spot that he deserves again let's go back to the robert downey jr though it is confirmed that this isn't a stark variant this is victor von doom played by robert downey jr which is definitely going to confuse some people because, well, that's Tony Stark, right? Like, that's Iron Man as we know him. But the beautiful thing about Doom is that you don't have to show his face. You, I mean, they might take the angle now that, yeah, sure, we're going to show off what Victor looks like maybe prior to whatever happens to him that he has to put on the mask and stuff like that and be Dr. Doom, right? Because the mask is such an integral part of that character that if you're going to have him walk around in nanotech and just take off his mask every three seconds just to say a line or something like that, you're completely missing the point of the character. And I really hope that they take their time with just who he is and really the backstory because you need to keep that mask on. That is that is Doom. He keeps that mask on because of the accident that happened to him. Or there's a bunch of different iterations as reasons as to why he keeps the mask on. But that's kind of the primary reason, right? His face is scarred up. He doesn't want to take it off. And it just feeds into his superiority complex and just all of that stuff. It's just so much layers and layers and layers to go through and so many things to attach ourselves to this character because Doctor Doom is the second best at just about anything in Marvel you could possibly think of. Right. When it comes to just using your brain, intelligence overall, he's second best. When it comes to magic and, and using the sorcery and dark arts and stuff like that, he's second. When it comes to just willpower and determination, he's definitely up there, but I would also say he's second to that. Like he is the underdog who is so determined to be this greater being. And he believes himself to be this on this higher plane. Of course, we all remember the comic panel where he says, I've been a god once. I found it beneath me. It's like, that's just so telling about who Victor really thinks he is and like the place he has amongst the hierarchy of just beings in the universe. He he believes himself to be that great. He believes himself to be this incredible leader who will lead the universe into this golden age behind his, his willpower and behind him. And it's just like, it's such an interesting twist. And that's why I think Robert Downey Jr. works so well because Iron Man's entire character was about this arc of redemption and becoming selfless in the very end and making that sacrifice play as of course mentioned by cap in avengers one it's all about making that full arc to having life be about me 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 to finding something bigger to fight for and stuff like that and now you have this character who wants to fight for everything for really the benefit of himself right and that's kind of the arc of secret wars in the comic when doom does eventually get the power of the beyonder the first thing he does is heal his face right it's like a, it's very telling of just how ego maniacal he is and just how self-centered he really is and i think that just works and to see just how similar iron man and dr doom are as on the outside right they're these suited geniuses with very tortured past and they're trying to basically achieve this higher purpose it's such a good mirror of what these characters mean in the long run of stuff like that. Even in comics, just the general respect they have for each other whenever they run into each other. It's very, it's going to be a very interesting dynamic to see on screen because if you guys think we're not going to get Doctor Doom versus Iron Man, we're going to get it, right? It's like, it's, it's almost paramount at this point to have the hero face down the opposite version of themselves. And if they're setting up Robert Downey Jr. as Victor, it's the perfect mirror to have him stand across from Tony Stark. But of 
course, what does that mean really in our universe? Because we don't have a Tony Stark. We don't have that. Who's to say Doctor Doom even does face down a Tony Stark from our universe? He could face down another one. But the main thing is how our heroes in our universe interact with a Doctor Doom, with a person who is, to them, Tony Stark. And then you think about the characters who have interactions with Tony now having to interact with Doom. See a Spider-Man who recognizes his teacher in Doctor Doom and, and what angle that now creates is like we we have so many possibilities now for Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark being the savior of the universe as we know it to then have this new person come in and want to destroy it which is him again it's just i think it's is poetry in motion shout out to george lucas i don't want to put so much on the character to make me feel like oh my god marvel's back now right because it's equally just as feasible for them to fumble all of this this gigantic announcement this character who's having his first proper introduction on screen in my opinion it's just as easy for them to fumble this opportunity because all they have to do is make a bad movie and none of this is gonna matter but it does give me faith because right now you're pulling out the big guns i think when they acquired fox and all of that we were wondering when these characters are going to show up on screen what's going to happen with them and then they did show up on screen and then mutants were mentioned and then it was mentioned in a in a Disney Plus show by Miss Marvel. We've seen Fantastic Four and mutants in Charles Xavier and Mr. Fantastic appear in Doctor Strange. And what happened to them? Disrespected instantly. They just got wiped. It made me really fear for these characters a bit, right? Because it's like, okay, we're not going to get them in any official form. They'll be in cameos and stuff like that. But if we're already off, the, off to the races, treating them like garbage, what does that say about the future? I think Deadpool 3 was just such a strategic move to play it right before Comic-Con and right before all these big announcements because Deadpool 3 is exactly what we expected Multiverse of Madness to be. These great cameos, these respect to these characters, and that's kind of the main thing I want to talk about now. Respect to these characters because Doctor Doom has gotten no respect over the years. The Fantastic Four have gotten very little respect over the years. The X-Men continuously find ways to kind of fumble the ball over the years, and so what that meant is Marvel tried to shoo them away for a time and kind of push their main avengers as kind of the the flagship faces for the brand but now we're in this new era and they finally have these characters and we're finally treating them with respect starting with the deadpool movie when you have a channing tatum as gambit when you have a wesley slipes as blade and even chris evans as johnny storm again who oh, he got kind of disrespected a little bit but in the grand scheme of things they weren't because they got their spotlight and they didn't die instantly and not in the case of johnny storm of course but that's that was my main thing when it came to the future of Marvel is how are you going to lend respect to these characters because I understand the Avengers history has tons of characters to choose from tons of genuinely interesting plot lines and storylines that you can pull from to make it something really great which they weren't in the comics right because Kang was always a kind of big villain but was never pushed in that main villain spot and he definitely had that potential Thanos has always been that top of the brass type guy like yeah when you think about great villains even 10 years ago Thanos comes up in that conversation right like he he is that guy along with somebody like Ultron who is another person who they could have genuinely done more with Ultron like if you really read the comics and read the stories with that character he's so layered and he really does cause some crazy Crazy trouble for the heroes um the age of ultron storyline is a lot more devious in the comics than it is in the movie and so it felt like for a time that they weren't gonna give respect for characters outside of that avengers bubble and now that narrative is just completely flipped on its head and i love to see this i really do and that's kind of why i love the casting of robert downey jr so much because it's you're swinging for the fences now. I think Marvel understands that their back is to the wall. You need to convince the people somehow to want to get back on board with this. And they want Robert Downey Jr. And at the end of the day, we miss Robert Downey Jr. Even the characters in these movies miss Iron Man. And what better way than to give us Iron Man, but to give him to us in a different form. I, I think it's genius. I think it's a move that nobody really saw coming. And that's what you want to do with these movies. You want to subvert expectations in the best way possible because it gets people very curious and now what 
what people are going to do are look and truly look into the Secret Wars comics. Truly look and find out more information on who Doctor Doom really is. And that makes me super excited because, again, he is my favorite character ever in anything this is my guy so he is finally gonna get the spotlight that he deserves i i couldn't be more ecstatic i couldn't be more happy more videos are gonna come on this topic of course speculation because i honestly i really don't like doing speculation because it's risky because you you tend to get your own expectations up when really the best thing to do is kind of shoot for the middle kind of like how happy said in deadpool 3 shoot for that middle because you won't miss that it's hard to do that when you get these exciting news and just all this confirmation and it gets you thinking, it gets you mapping out all the possibilities that could possibly play out in the future and the interactions with certain characters and just everything. It's This is everything I've ever wanted. I have confidence that they won't drop the ball for this one. I have full entire confidence now. Um, you could call me a Marvel shill now. I will honestly gladly accept that title. Because th that th this is it for me. This is all I've ever wanted. Doctor Doom is coming for your favorite heroes. He's going to kill them all. I'm going to love it. You're going to love it. In the end, he's going to lose. We all know. But it's going to be glorious. I want Marvel to really take this seriously. And I want Robert Downey Jr. to, to really invest himself into this character like he did with iron man and just even more than that because it's it's synonymous now that robert is like one of the greatest on-screen heroes ever and i think if he can come for the title of greatest on-screen villain ever as well it'll just cement his legacy i think this is it right here this is what we need let me know down in the comments what you thought I, I, the, Dr. Doom just gets me rambling, man. Like, this isn't the only video I've made like this, as I mentioned before. Thank y'all for watching. And if you didn't know, my outro literally comes from a panel of Dr. Doom where he says, uh, you will never leave alive. Enjoy your stay and farewell. That's, that's literally where I got that from. Like, this character is everything to me. So, <sighs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed your stay and farewell.